All right, let's continue with part two. And the nervous system is a long chapter, but this will be good. All right, so let's go here. Whoopsie. All right. Where are we now? Yeah, here we are. We're actually, no, no. Yeah. Glial cells, gyrus, and the hypothalamus. So glial cells are neuroglial cells, supportive and connective nerve cell that does not carry nerve impulses. It can reproduce itself. That means it goes through mitosis and anything that goes through mitosis can develop cancer. Uh, gyrus, sheet of nerve cells that produces a rounded ridge on the surface of the cerebral cortex. It's convolution. Those are the bumps in your brain. The hypothalamus is the portion of the brain beneath the thalamus. Remember, the thalamus is air traffic control. So the hypothalamus is underneath that, and that controls sleep, appetite, body temperature, and pituitary gland secretions. Oh, my favorite, medulla oblongata, meninges, and microglial cells. Medulla oblongata is part of the brain just above the spinal cord, controls breathing, heart rate, size, and blood vessels. So as you start studying for the midterm, these are some good terms that you can, uh, and then you get chapter 10 uh, quiz as well. Meninges, three protective membranes that surround the brain and spinal cord, microglial cell, phagocytic glial cell that removes waste products and the central nervous system. Here's the midbrain, motor nerve, myelin sheet, and the nerve. The midbrain is the uppermost portion of the brainstem. The motor nerve carries messages away from the brain and spinal cord to muscles and organs. Okay. Efferent nerve. Myelin sheet is the covering of white fatty tissue that surrounds and insulates the axon of a nerve cell. Speeds the impulse. Think of an insulation on a wire. That's what a myelin sheet is. And the nerve is a macroscopic, not microscopic, macroscopic. You can see those core-like collection of fibers, which are axons and dendrites that carry electrical impulses. That's all a nerve is. Neuron, neurotransmitter, oligodendral glial cell. A neuron is a nerve cell that carries impulses throughout the body, parenchyma of the nervous system. It does not go through mitosis, so you only have a finite number of neurons. Um, how do you lose neurons? Uh, stress, mitosis, drinking, drugs, old age, trauma. Neurotransmitter, chemical messenger released at the end of the nerve cell, stimulates or inhibits another cell. Um, neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Oligodendroglial cell, glial cell that forms the myelin sheet covering the axons. Parasympathetic nerves, parenchyma, and the peripheral nervous system. Parasympathetic nerves, they're involuntary. They're autonomic nerves that regulate normal body functions such as heart rate, breathing, and muscles of the GI tract. That's your rest and digest. Parenchyma are essential distinguishing tissue of any organ or system. For the nervous system, neurons and nerves that carry the impulses. What's the peripheral nervous system? Nerves outside the brain and spinal cord. So those are your cranial, spinal, and autonomic nerves. Pia matter, plexus, and pons. A pia matter is the thin, delicate inner membrane of the meninges. A plexus is a large interlacing network of nerves like the brachial plexus. Pons is the part of the brain anterior to the cerebellum and between the medulla and the rest of the midbrain. Receptor, sciatic nerve, sensory nerve. Receptor, an organ that receives a nervous stimuli and passes it on to the afferent nerves. The skin, ears, eyes, and taste buds are receptors. You've heard of sciatica, low back pain, so, uh, dealing with the sciatic nerve. So the nerve extending from the base of the spine down to the thigh. That's why you get numbness and tingling in your thigh, lower leg, and foot. Sensory nerve carries messages toward the brain and spinal cord from the receptor afferent nerve. Spinal nerves, stimulus, stroma. Spinal nerves are 31 pairs arising from the spinal cord. A stimulus is an agent of change, light, sound, touch, pressure, in internal or external environment that evokes a response. Stroma is connective and supporting tissue of an organ. Glial cells are the stromal tissue of the brain. Okay, so the glial cells are the stroma of the brain. 
sulcus, sympathetic nerves, and a synapse. Sulcus are the depressions or grooves in the surface of. Sympathetic nerves are the autonomic nerves that influence bodily functions involuntary in times of stress. That's your fight and flight. Synapse is a space which a nervous impulse travels between nerve cells or between nerves. So that's a good quiz question, what a synapse is. Thalamus, vagus nerve, ventricles. <clears throat> Thalamus is air traffic control. It's the main relay center of the brain, it conducts impulses between the spinal cord and the cerebrum. The vagus nerve, it's the 10th cranial nerve, but it branches to reach to the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs, the aortoesophagus, and stomach. The ventricles of the brain are canals in the brain that contain cerebral spinal fluid. What's a sheet of nerve cells that produces a rounded fold or bump on the surface of the cerebellum? That's the gyrus. What's the thin, delicate inner membrane of the meninges? That's a pia matter. All right, so let's take a look at this terminology organs and structures so cerebell means cerebellum so cerebellar would be pertaining to the cerebellum you can cerebrum okay cerebra so cerebrum dura means dura dura matter tough encephalo brain you've heard of encephalitis is inflammation of the brain Okay, subdural, so subdural hematoma, collection of blood above the dura matter. I'm sorry, subdural would be below, underneath. Glial means glial cells, so glioblastoma or glioma, tumor. Lept is thin and slender. Leptomeningitis is inflammation of the pia matter and arachnoid membrane. Meninges is meningitis. You've heard of that. Okay. My is muscle. So myoneural, pertaining to muscle and nerve. Mylogram, okay, or myelogram, would be an image pertaining or record of the spinal cord. Neuro, neuropathy, is disease of the nerves. Um, you've heard of diabetic neuropathy. That's very common. Then uh, there's also peripheral neuropathy. Uh, ponto means pons. So cerebellopontine pertaining to the cerebellum and the pons. Radiculo, nerve root. So radiculopathy is disease of the spinal cord nerves. Uh, thalam is thalamus. So thalamic means pertaining to the thalamus. A uh, thec means a sheet refers to meninges or a intrathecal injection is a placement of substances medications into the subarachnoid space and vago or vague means vagus so vagal means pertaining to the vagus nerve now here's some signs and symptoms that you might see so algesia excessive sensitivity to pain so if you have analgesia that's a condition of no sensation of pain usually accompanied by sedation without loss of con okay algia is pain so you have neuralgia that's nerve pain you have causalgia which is a burning sensation of pain cause is burning so causalgia would be burning sensation of pain cephalalgia would be a headache so next time you have a headache you're like oh i'm experiencing cephalalgia Coma is a deep sleep, so you've heard of a coma or a comatose state, in a state of coma. Esthesia, feeling nervous sensation, so anesthesia is a condition of no nerve sensation, so you're given anesthesia. Kinesia is movement, so you can have bradykinesia, which is slowness in movement, or tachykinesia, which is fast movement. Kinesis is movement, so hyperkinesis is excessive movement. Kinesiology is study of movement. Lepsy would be a seizure, so epilepsy, chronic disorder marked by attacks of the brain dysfunction. Narcolepsy would be sudden uncontrollable episodes of sleep. 
Uh, lex is word or phrase, so if you have dyslexia, that's a disorder of reading, writing, and learning. Paresis, so if you have hemiparesis, so somebody that suffered a CVA or a stroke would have hemiparesis. So a right CVA would mean that they have left hemiparesis because it goes on the opposite side. Phasia is speech, so aphasia would be a condition of inability to speak. Plesia is paralysis, so you have paraplegia, quadriplegia. Paraplegia is paralysis in the lower portion of the body, where quadriplegia is paralysis in all four limbs. Praxia is action, so apraxia would be inability to carry out familiar purposeful movements. Sthenia, strength. Neurasthenia, condition of lacking nerve, lack of nerve strength. Syncope is cut off, so syncopal is a pertain to syncope, syncope meaning uh, fainting, and tax is coordination, so if you have ataxia, you have no coordination or no muscular coordination, which term means nerve pain, algia, neuralgia, that would be D, which type of hematoma occurs between the skull and the dura as a result of the ruptured meningeal artery, usually after a fracture of the skull. That would be an epidural, okay? because it's between the skull and the dura. So that would be above the dura. That would be epidural. Below the dura would be a subdural. All right. Now here's some pathological conditions that you might run into. Hydrocephalus, spina bifida, spina bifida cystica. So usually they'll put a shunt for hydrocephalus. Hydro meaning water, cephalus meaning head, water. Okay. Spina bifida occulta. So if you have uh, a patient yourself, you have this little tuft of hair or a little bit of hair on your back, uh, right at L4, L5. That's um, sometimes remnants of spina bifida occulta. The way you prevent that is drink orange juice or take folic acid supplements during your pregnancy. Okay. So now it's a pretty easy way to prevent uh, uh, spina bifida nowadays. Uh, you have Alzheimer's, AD, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, epilepsy, Huntington disease, MS, uh, myasthenia gravis, palsy, Parkinson's, and Tourette's syndrome. Uh, some infectious disorders, you have herpes, which are shingles, meningitis, uh, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, and encephalopathy. Cerebral concussion, you guys have heard a lot about concussions. It's a type of TBI which is a traumatic brain injury caused by a blow to the head. Usually no evidence of structural damage to the brain tissue, but rest is very important to allow the brain to heal. A cerebral contusion would be bruising of the brain tissue as a result of direct trauma to the head. It may be associated with a fracture of the skull, edema. Remember, um, the brain has no real uh, pain uh, nerves or so if you were to cut open your skull, that would hurt. But when you actually touch the brain or you can actually, there's no pain receptors. So subdural and epidural hematomas can occur leading to permanent brain injury. Uh, CVA is a stroke. Thrombotic, which is a blood clot in arteries leaving the brain. Embolic is dislodged blood clot that's traveling to the cerebral arteries. And hemorrhagic is blood vessels breaks and bleeding occurs. A CVA is which is a stroke, a cerebral vascular accident. Blood flows freely from a normal artery. Now hemorrhagic strokes are caused by cerebral artery wall ruptures. Embolic strokes are caused by dislodged thrombi, emboli that occlude cerebral arteries, and thrombotic strokes are caused by arthromatose plaques. That includes cerebral arteries. So there's different three types of strokes: uh, thrombotic, embolic, and hemorrhagic. So what's another name for CVA? That would be cerebral vascular accident or stroke. X-ray test: uh, you can do a cerebral angiography, you can do a CT scan, you can do MRI, PET, EEG, or Doppler studies. So here's the abbreviations that you might want to know. You've got Alzheimer's disease, AD, AFS, 
oh, I'm sorry, AFP, alpha fetoprotein, ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease. Remember the ice bucket challenge? That was all part of ALS. AVM, arterial vena venous malformation, BBB, that's your blood-brain barrier, CNS, central nervous system, CT, computed tomography, CSF, cerebral spinal fluid, CVA, cerebral spinal, cerebral vascular accident. EEG is electroencephalogram. GABA is a gamma amino butric acid, that's a neurotransmitter. ICP is intracranial pressure, normal pressure is 5 to 15 milligrams of mercury. LP is a lumbar puncture. MAC is a monitored anesthetic care. MG is myasthenia gravis. MRA is a magnetic resonance angiography. MRI is a magnetic resonance imaging. Half P means hemiparesis. PCA is patient control anesthesia. PNS is peripheral nervous system. PET is a positron emission tomography. SC means seizure, TBI means traumatic brain injury, TENS is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, so uh, if you have pain, they can put that on. TIA is a transient ischemic attack, so make sure you know the difference between CVA, TBI, and TIA, TLE, temporal lobe epilepsy, and TPA, tissue plasmogenic activator. So TBA is pretty traumatic. Uh, TBI, you know, that could lead to some serious complications. TIA is transient. No, usually sometimes they don't have permanent uh, issues. And then a CVA is a stroke. Okay. So when you're asking yourself why did you learn some of this stuff, so here's some stuff that you can uh, ask or here's some practical applications. What symptoms signal nervous system problems? So do you get numbness and tingling? Do you get vision problems? Do you get uh, cognitive problems? Do you get gait issues? Gait is walking. Uh, what tests are connected to diagnose these problems? What can you order? Can you order CT scans, MRIs, PET scans? Why are an MRI and an MRA ordered? Okay. So, and what are common pathologies of the nervous system? So as you study for the midterm and the chapter 10 quiz, uh, keep that in mind. Um, all right, good stuff.